Good afternoon and welcome to our text.connect text.gov dashboards training. Uh, we have put this together in partnership with the text.connect team to make sure that everyone knows what to expect with some of the new dashboard content that will become available on text.gov on our public website in just a few days on June 1st. Uh, so we want to give everyone the chance to to take a look at that. Uh, see what is coming and we're going to go through not only the uh, the functionality of the dashboard. Let's talk a little bit about why we are doing this. Uh, just as we get started, a couple of housekeeping things. We tend to leave uh, our participants on mute. That's just because there's a lot of folks. What I would also ask if you've got your video on, uh, unless you're speaking or, or need to uh, need to tell us something or show us something. Uh, what I'd ask is that you turn off your video just because sometimes whenever we get a lot of people on the phone, it can start to play havoc with the bandwidth, potentially cause some uh, other issues, slowness, audio issues, etc. If you do have questions, uh, what we invite you to do is use the chat window in Teams to submit those questions. Uh, and just ask us those. We'll keep an eye on the chat as we go. We're going to do our best to address as many of those questions as time allows, uh, but also know that this call is being recorded. If you do not consent to being recorded, please go ahead and drop off the call. Uh, we are recording this though, so you can always come back and, and rejoin the recording if you need. Um, but uh, We'll be posting this or, or one of the one of the versions will be posted out there on the live website. Uh, just so you will have that as a record. Quick agenda, not a whole lot to cover today. Uh, I think on Tuesday, whenever we did the similar session, it took about 30 or 45 minutes, <clears throat> but we'll just give a little bit of an introduction here. We're doing that now and we'll give an overview of what's coming. So by way of introduction, I will just say hello. My name is Will Boyd. I'm on the text.connect team over the OCM and training uh, group. That's the organizational change management and training teams. Uh, with us on the line here today, we also have Ben McCullough and Ben McCullough is the reporting lead for the text.connect team. Ben, can you say hello? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ben. Uh, ben is going to be walking you through the actual Tableau dashboards. He is definitely an expert uh, at all that functionality. Uh, so that is what we'll be spending the most of our time doing is walking through those dashboards in a demonstration. Let's talk first though about what we're doing and why. Uh, if any of you have worked with TextDot in the past, uh, you may know that each month, uh, sometimes occasionally more than once a month, uh, we have letting where we award projects to various contractors and we have to post reports of that upcoming letting on our public website so that contractors are aware of it. Well, the current process for how we generate those reports is not sustainable as we continue to build our new text.connect solution. Uh, it doesn't work and does not generate the same types of files as the legacy mainframe systems from uh, 20 or 30 years past. Uh, and so what we are doing instead is using Tableau to build those dashboards and create interactive real-time data at your fingertips, simplify things a good deal, we think. So we are going to move forward and show you a little bit more about that. Just to give you an idea, right now, if you go out to text.gov and you go to our project letting pages, you're going to find a whole host of different links, multiple pages, things to click through. Uh, and what that ends up being is a pretty tough to navigate maze and rabbit warren. Uh, of all kinds of different pages and links. Uh, it's usually pretty easy to find what you're getting to, uh, what you're looking for, but it is uh, a little bit link heavy uh, and it's an awful lot of work for our web team and our letting team and everybody involved in the process to keep that stuff up to date, which can really only realistically happen uh, at most once a week. Now, what we're hoping to do is take all of that information and consolidate it into a single interactive dashboard. So you have access to all the same data, but it is much easier to view, much easier to navigate. And instead of having one report per district or one report per month, you can see all districts, all months, and merely uh, 
uh, filter those down to a specific district or project type or whatever uh, you may need as you go. And, and Ben's going to show you all about how to do that, but it's going to help clean things up out there on our public website quite a bit. Here's the overall timeline of what we're hoping to accomplish over the coming months. Now, right here in June 1st, uh, the early part of the month of June, we are going live with those few dashboards that you see there on the left. Uh, some of those items that are listed there are future enhancements to those dashboards. So for example, if you're looking at the letting schedule in the future, you'll be able to click down and view the addenda. Uh, as we move forward, <clears throat> you'll have access to additional information, much more detailed information, bid tabulations, official and unofficial bid item index and averages. Uh, you'll be able to see the bidders list index and all the qualified vendor listing, active specifications, bid items, provisions. All of that is planned to occur over the coming months uh, and heading into the next fiscal year uh, in the fall of 2022. Uh, so stay tuned, we'll continue to communicate about that. What is happening right now, and you can see that little green stripe there upon the on the right hand side of the page. What's happening in June 22 is just that the first of these dashboards is going live, those priority one items, uh, not including those items that are listed as future enhancements. Uh, I'm going to pause there for a moment. Uh, ben, I know that you are working and leading the team that's that's putting these together. Do you have anything to add here on this slide before we move on? Uh, yeah, so like Will said, there'll be several waves. Uh, we plan to have all of this done by October of 2022. Um, that's when we will be uh, transitioning the letting process off of the main mainframes and onto the modern system. So um, several of these dashboards will go live then. The rest of them will go live in between the two dates. Got it. Thank you very much, Ben. Uh, and as we mentioned, we'll continue to send out updates via email and provide some additional updates out on the web page. Uh, if you've been out to that letting schedule uh, just in the past few days or a couple of weeks, you will notice there is a banner up at the top of that letting schedule page now that explains a little bit about what is coming. Uh, it just gives a quick blurb and then you can click to open an informational document. Uh, for those of you who haven't already seen that, I encourage you to go check it out and also make sure that your colleagues and your coworkers and folks that you may partner with are aware that this information is coming uh, and that these changes are taking place. Uh, we're doing our best to communicate that out to as many people as we can, but we certainly rely on folks like you uh, who have the network, who are uh, talking around the water cooler and, and sharing information with friends. Uh, please spread, help us spread the word uh, about what's coming and why. Included in that informational document that pops up, whenever you click learn more about dashboards, uh, it opens up that file. It does have each of these training sessions listed. And so we've had two this week. Uh, we've got four more uh, in the weeks coming up. We'll be posting a recording of these and we will also be publishing some job aids that help you to walk through that functionality step by step. Uh, we'll be po posting those uh, as the dashboards go live. Um, here's a, another close up of some of the information in that document. Uh, a few of the things that you'll be able to do with this, uh, instead of having to open a large document and then scroll down to find the section that you want, uh, that interactive Tableau dashboard allows you to create a customized view. So if there's certain information that you find yourself filtering the same way time and again. Uh, you can create your own customized view just to save a little bit of time. I think the biggest benefits here for uh, those of us who rely on these reports uh, to plan staffing, to plan all of our work and cash flow over years, uh, this data is updated hourly. So if something changes, you're going to know within the hour instead of having to wait for the next time it gets updated, which may not have been for a week in the past. Uh, that information is uploaded and updated automatically. Uh, there was a quite labor intensive process for making sure that that information got updated previously, which of course could slow things down. And it's going to reduce all of that noise out there, that rabbit warren of links and web pages and reports. Uh, you're going to have everything uh, just in a few handy dandy dashboards built in Tableau. 
Uh, and again, you see those training dates there. Uh, going on to this, I think this is our last slide before we dive into the demonstration, but just to give you a preview of what the dashboards are that you'll have access to and what they are replacing. So the first one here on the left is our project information and notice to contractors. There's going to be two tabs that Ben will walk you through, and this will provide the same information that you can currently see today at that letting schedule page. You can either go to the fiscal year 22 or fiscal year 23. Both the current and next fiscal year will always be available in this dashboard. Uh, and again, that information is being updated uh, on an hourly basis. In the middle here, you have your 24 month letting schedule. You can view that at a summary level or you can slice it by district or you can slice it by month. Again, an interactive dashboard and you can modify and slice and dice that data as you need to. Uh, and then last on the right hand side of the slide here, our category analysis dashboard. Now our letting team and some of the folks that work on the UTP are very familiar with this to understand how our spending and the way that we are actually charging our funds and then using the funds to build projects, how that lines up against the allocations that we've planned. Are we over? Are we under? We don't really want to be either one, right? We don't want to be too far over because we're starting to, to write checks we can't cash. We certainly don't want to be under either where work is going undone. So uh, for each of these dashboards, they're going to be replacing some of the pages that are already out there. And let me give a really critical detail about that. Those pages that are already out there today, like the letting schedules and some of the information, if you go out there and you access, let me go back a couple slides, uh, any of these items today, addenda, bid tabulations, official and unofficial bid item, until this goes live, those items will continue to be available as they are today. So if you're looking for addenda information and we haven't replaced that yet with that enhancement, you're still going to access the, the same way as you would today out there on the website. Once we go live with these dashboards, that information will continue to be there, but we will no longer update it. So coming back to our final slide here, looking there on the left, for example, thinking about some of the reports that are out there on the letting schedule pages by district or by month, uh, those reports will continue to be there, but they will no longer be updated with new information starting in July. So be aware of some of these changes that are coming. We are here to help you and provide some support through that process and make sure that you are equipped to continue to use that, uh, use these tools and get the data that you need to make good decisions. So I think at that point, Ben, I'll go ahead and hand things over to you, sir. Let you share your screen and walk us through what that page is going to look like and how we use these new dashboards. Okay, share my screen. All right, so you should be seeing a preview of the web page that uh, will house the three dashboards. Uh, these are little accordions that you click on um, and they expand and they provide links to the dashboards. As you open a new one, the old one closes. So the page doesn't get too big. So we're going to go through each of these today um, and I'll walk you through what is in each of the dashboards. So the first dashboard is the project information and the notice to contractors. So this is the updated project information dashboard. Um, so uh, you'll see it has information for uh, a single fiscal year in this donut chart. You have information by month right now and the bar chart, and then you have a listing of projects. I am gonna filter um, to Houston. Okay, so this is all of Houston's projects for the entire fiscal year. Uh, you can switch to look by district, but you know, it rolls everything up. We're going to keep it at the month. Uh, so you can see there's multiple different types of projects. There's a non-let type of project and statewide. Um, when you hover, if there is, yeah. So this project is a construction project. It's an overlay. Uh, you'll see the limits. Um, for the project and the latitude and uh, the latitude information. 
along with the sequence, the dates, and the project number for the project. Um, you can also filter further down if you want to look into a specific type of project. So if you're only looking to widen the freeway or widen non-freeways, you can filter that down and now see what months they are in and the individual projects. So it gives you a nice good way to figure out um, if there's certain types of projects you want to focus on. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to the statewide view really quick. Um, the same logic applies that you don't have to filter, use all these filters. So if you just care about, um, say, work on bridge replacements, and you don't care where in the state you do that work, And of course, the dashboard refreshes. Let's try that again. Bridge replacement. OK, so these are all of the bridge replacement projects across the state. Oh, I say that and it selected only Houston again. This is across the state. So, um, you know, you can really see what's coming up and start planning if you want to apply uh, for those or put a proposal in for those projects. All right, I'm going to clear this and then uh, let's see if there's any uh, questions in the chat. I don't see any at the moment. So I'm going to move on to notice to contractors. Uh, you have a couple other filters before we move on let date or let types and let dates. So if you just want to see something in a certain month, you can certainly filter it down. So. Let's do something that hasn't left. Uh, so let's pick August. And then we'll look at it by district and we'll see the spread of who has projects. So. A lot of projects in Houston and Austin. All right, so now we're going to look at notice to contractors. So this dashboard is basically the same uh, type of data, except it's looking at the upcoming two months of projects. Um, and it's just focusing on two months of projects. Again, you can filter by project type. If you wish your district, do you have the same type of information? Uh, you do have your limits, your latitude, longitude, um, if it's in the system. That's weird. They were showing yesterday. All right. Um, I'm going to have to go figure out why they stopped showing. Uh, but that data does exist on these projects. Uh, you do have the capability of downloading the data. Uh, this was an option on the other dashboard as well. Uh, this button will let you pick which one uh, to download. I uh, recommend the listing. And if you hover, it's going to tell you which one you're looking at. Uh, you can do either CSV or Excel. If you download the Excel version, it's going to look exactly like this table. So that May 19, 2022, that's only going to appear once, but then you'll have two lines, one for Brownwood, one for Paris. The CSV file, however, that May 19 will appear on each line. Um, so let me just show you the difference. So here's the Excel. Pull it over for my other screen, I think. OK. So this is what the Excel will look like, like I was explaining. Um, so there are multiple projects that have a May 29th. Um, and so it lists it only once. The CSV version, CSV version, however, we'll put it on each row. OK, so this is the CSV. Same data in the same order. Um, but you can see that it's on every row, every row. So depending on how you want to use this data when you download it, 
um, depends on which version you want to grab. Okay, so that is the project uh, information and the notice to contractors. Are there any questions on this dashboard before I move to another dashboard? You can raise your hand, you can put it in the chat. We have no questions, no questions at this time, sir. OK. All right, so we're going to move on to the. Uh, budding schedule dashboard, so this is a 24 month budding schedule. Uh, this is the dashboard. Uh, this data um, is showing. 24 months of flooding. Um, you can click on one of the bars I clicked on on August 2022 um, and it will drill down and open up a summary by district with the federal, state and local amounts for the dollar amounts for the project and then a project listing, uh, which gives you the basic information of the CCSJ. You can break it out to the uh, subordinate CSJs if you care. Um, you'll see the highway and the project class that this project's on. Um, but both of these are interactive as well. So if you just want to look at the Dallas projects, um, then it will also filter down for the August 2022. And if you want to clear it, clear all of them, you can just unclick the August. Um, you will have to fix the Dallas part um, by that direction. So, um, yeah, so everything's interactable, interactive. You can hover and see some basic information. So, if you just want to look at the design build in February 2022, you can drill down to that. Um, if you just want to see this local let, again, you can drill down further. Um, to Laredo and now you're down to that. So you have a lot of things you can click on and filter to get the data you need. Uh, there are a couple different versions of this data. So uh, this is more of a tabular format that we resembles currently what we publish. Uh, there is no interactive feature where you click on it and it opens up additional information. It's just the table, um, but you can filter it by month if you wish to see it. Uh, this is basically the same idea, except it's uh, filtered by month. Um, and again, this one does not click and open up data. Uh, but if if you do want to filter it by district, you have that option as well. So. Um, it's all the same base data. It's just different ways of looking at the data. Um, these two are more reminiscent of what we currently produce. The uh, first dashboard is um, a brand new way of looking at the data. Um, any questions? I don't see anything in the chat and I don't see any hands. Give it a few seconds. Hey, Ben, I wonder if you could. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of an echo, but uh, you mentioned earlier how you can drill into each of these sections uh, on a couple of these different dashboards. Uh, and I wonder if you can just show that one more time. If you click right there, what information is it that I can drill down and see? I can see each individual project. I can see each individual district, totals, right. etc. So you So for December 2021, which is what we are looking at right now, you can see all the districts that make up December 2021 with their federal, state, local amounts, and then their totals. And then you have the listing of the projects that make up that listing of December. You can drill down further by just saying, click on Abilene here, and it's going to filter down your data, and you're only going to see Abilene in this side. Unclick that. You could also filter it from this table. So if you just want to look at um, Houston, then you can look at Houston for December 2021. It'll get you a listing of projects. So and basically, you can hover and see additional information on that project. So you can actually see uh, what is the description, what is the limits for the project, um, 
what is the contract number or the federal or the project federal or state. That's great. So basically I could use the filters up at the top or I can just click on things that I see. Uh, whenever I click on a district or I click on a month, it acts like a toggle to so to unfilter. I just click on it again yeah, uh, so to, just, to go back to everything. Yeah, unclick Houston, unclick December, and now you're back to everything. Great, thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, so we have one more dashboard to look at. So this dashboard, um, well, refreshing. Uh, this dashboard is the category analysis uh, dashboard. So this is mainly used by the MPOs uh, to track their, um, at least for external, um, to track their uh, allocations to their funding that they are provided by from TxDOT um, against projects that are scheduled. So the way this works is that we have broken down our funding into basically different flavors of money. Um, so uh, they have a subcategory. Uh, for instance, we have this category 10 federal earmarks. There's multiple category 10s. Each of them have a slightly different flavor of how you can spend the money. Um, they have an allocation. The uh, carryover is from your previous fiscal year. So if you overspent in the previous fiscal year, you'll have a negative. If you have money left over, you'll have a positive. Um, this is any transfers between uh, districts um, or between funding categories. Um, there's several ways to move money around. Um, and that creates your revised allocation. What you see that shows September, October, November, all the way through August is a listing of projects that use this flavor of money. So if you were to click on September, you're going to see a listing of projects by district um, that have used this money. This second one that I'm hovering on right now, 2.5 million was charged to the uh, preventative maintenance and rehabilitation money, but that project had $3.8 million spent on it. So there's another bucket of money that is helping pay for this project. Um, so I'm gonna unclick September. The other piece of this data is the adjustments, which start with this PE slash right away, and it goes to the variance. So these are various adjustments that um, either happen at the federal government. Uh, some of these are on the project, such as the force accounts and the incentives and disincentives. You can actually see what project has uh, these force accounts and how much um, and how it's being charged. Um, and same with the incentives and disincentives. Um, all those combine to show the total adjustments. Um, and then you take your allocation, your project, and your adjustments, and you sum them together. And that tells you how much money you have left, or in some cases, how much you've overspent. Uh, you can filter by uh, your district um, if you're looking into this. Um, like I said, primarily this is not for uh, this group, but I just wanted to explain what this is. So when you go see it, you know what you're looking at. Uh, there's another view that um, is more of a summary view. It gives you a two year total. It's the same idea, the same data, um, just for two years instead of one. Um, and again, you can look and see uh, the uh, detail behind it for the projects. OK, um, so that are that is the three uh, dashboards that are being published on June 1st. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, this will be uh, there will be the videos posted. So we we recorded Monday, uh, Tuesdays. 
Tuesday's presentation and today's, and we'll pick the best and we will uh, post it. Um, you will find those video links. Um, I thought we had a, it listed here, but once it actually goes live, we'll have those links available. Um, so you can review this when you need to. That's right, Ben. I, I got to check, but I do believe it's going to be right there where it says how to use this dashboard. Currently, it only shows a link to the job aid. There will also be a bullet there for the video. Correct. And what Ben is showing there right now, that's a preview. That page is not live yet, so there is uh, that will be live uh, next week whenever these videos, uh, sorry, whenever these dashboards go live. Okay. Um, if there's no questions, that is all we had today. I want to thank you for your uh, time. Um, we are here to help make things easier uh, to get access to TextDot's data. Um, so if you have any uh, questions or recommendations in the future, please reach out. Um, we do have a uh, help desk email. Uh, or you can email us at text.connect at text.gov um, with suggestions. Absolutely. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Ben, very much for walking us through the dashboards and showing us how everything works. Uh, we're excited to bring this all to you uh, and to, to continue to deliver on that promise about transparency, creating a one-stop shop for data, and creating a place where everyone, every stakeholder, whether they are in TechStot leadership, whether they're on the front lines out in the districts, whether they are contractors, whether they are legislators, whether they are researchers, we want everyone to have access to this information so that we can all make better decisions uh, in as easy and quick and interactive a way as possible. Uh, so thank you, Ben, not only for presenting on this, but on helping to build those dashboards and, and driving this effort uh, to completion. Thank you all for joining us. Again, my name is Will, and this has been the Text.Connects team's demonstration and training of the new text.gov dashboards. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.